Let's take a look at the export settings. If you look under the export settings, you'll see a series of options. All these options are operations that will get applied to your objects before they are exported to your FBX file. Let's take a look at this first one. Export all actions. By default, this will be on. And essentially what this is doing is it's ensuring that regardless of the mute values on your NLA tracks, your actions will get exported. So let's go ahead and just hit pipeline export sent to Unreal. If we look over in Unreal, we will see that we have two actions. We have our idle action, and we also have our run action. This is because we have that setting on, which states that we will export all actions. Now, if I was to turn this off and delete these two actions in Unreal, and do that same operation again, you will see that it only exports the idle animation. This is because only the idle animation is unmuted, and vice versa. If we just only unmute the run animation, we export this to Unreal, you'll see that we only get one animation, and it's just the run animation. The next option is Auto Stash Active Action. What this is supposed to do is supposed to simplify the process of creating animation on your characters and stashing them into the NLA track for you so you don't have to think about doing that. So for example, I just have this mannequin character here. I want to create a new action and send it to Unreal. So now that we have our action created, I'm going to send it to Unreal. But first I want to show you what the NLA tracks look like. When you have an action and you're working on it, it will be put into this active action slot. But it's not actually in your object's NLA stack. In order for this action to be in your object's NLA stack, it has to be pushed down like this. So what Sent Unreal is doing is it's doing that process for you so you don't even have to think about it. So if I hit pipeline export sent to Unreal. You can see that I have this action that was sent over to Unreal. And you can also see that it stashed that action in my NLA tracks. If we turn this off and I tried that exact same operation again, let me delete this from Unreal. If I do this again and just hit pipeline export send to Unreal, you'll see we get this error message. You do not have the correct objects under the mesh or rig collections or your rig does not have any actions to export. And that's correct. Our rig does not have any actions to export because there are no actions under this object's NLA tracks. So we would have to manually stash it like this, pipeline export send to Unreal. So this can be useful and it's left on by default. But if you are doing very specific editing with your NLA tracks, you might want to toggle this off so that this push down operation doesn't mess with your arrangement of your NLA tracks. Let's take a look at this third option. Notice this option is grayed out. This is grayed out because this operation relies on another one of our add-ons. So if you are using UE to Rigify and you activate it, you'll have access to this option. What this does is it simply syncs your NLA strips between your two different rigs. So let's go ahead and take a look at our scene. If we open up the UE to Rigify toolkit and we just select this rig as our source rig and we go ahead and just click overwrite animation and click convert it will convert both our run and our idle animation over to this rig's animation data. So you can see that our control rig is now animated. If we take a look at our scene, we can unhide our root rig here. Now this might seem a little bit convoluted, but the idea behind UE to Rigify is that you use Rigify to drive your original source rig and you do not make any modifications to your original rig. You're just driving the original bones and those in turn drive the skinned mesh. So when we want to export something to Unreal, 
we want to export just our source rig. And you can see that our source rig, which is called root, is under the rig collection. So if we want to animate on our control rig and export our source rig with the matching actions to Unreal, we need to sync up the NLA track data. This includes mute values, start and end frame positions, and also the strip scale. So if we take a look at our preferences real quick, and we turn off auto stash active action, and we just leave this option on, auto sync control NLA strips to source. Let's see how this works. I'm going to move this run strip right here in my NLA track. I'm going to export send to Unreal. And you'll notice that our root rig has synced up with our control rigs NLA tracks. This can be used in a variety of different ways. If I go over here and I just remove the active action, you can see that we have this idle animation and then we have our run animation. Now let's take an example where I would be making an idle animation that goes into a run. So say I wanted to see how my animation is in the viewport going from an idle to a run, but I want to export those as two separate actions to Unreal. You can do that. Just pipeline export send to Unreal. And you'll see that we have our idle and we have our run. Now, let's see another way that we could use this. If we went into our preferences, edit preferences, if I turn off auto sync control NLA strips to source, you can do some interesting things. For example, if I was just to remove this run track and I was to go here and go to this idle track, I'm just going to create a new animation. called combined and then I'm going to go over here to this strip and on this strip I'm going to assign it the action combined so the thing to remember with sent to unreal is ultimately it exports actions on strips so if I have an action called combined that's just on this NLA strip then the NLA strip will determine the start and end values as well as the scale of the action, but the action will be exported. And since there is only one action on our source rig, and there's two actions on our control tool rig, this will combine these actions for us. So if I just go in here, and on this strip, I'm just going to put its end value to where it's about at the end of the run. Now when we export, we should have a single animation called combined that is exporting idle and run together. So if I hit pipeline export send to Unreal, you'll see we get a third action. You'll notice we get this static animation, which is not what we want. What we want is to have both of these actions playing under a single action called combined. So let's go back to our preferences. You'll notice we have this export all actions ticked. What we want to do is untick that option. And the reason for that is, is what that setting is doing is it's simply going through and it's unmuting all of your actions. But when you're working with UE to Brigify, it essentially is looking at your unmuted actions here and it's trying to unmute them for you here. But since we have an action called run and an action called idle, and this action is also called combined, there is no correlation, so it can't unhide that for you. So it is up to you to just uncheck that option and unhide the action yourself. So this time, if we hit pipeline, export, send to Unreal, we will get an action that starts out in the idle and finishes in the run. The last option we have is use object origin. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to take these three cubes, and they're spaced about two units apart in Blender, and I'm going to move them to the mesh collection. I'm going to do pipeline export sent on real. 
If we go over to Unreal, we will see that our three cubes have been imported. I'm just going to move them into our scene here. You can see that each cube has its origin at what was the world origin in Blender. If I go to Edit Preferences and I tick on this option, Use Object as Origin, I'm going to just redo that. Pipeline Export Sent to Unreal. You'll now see that all three objects have their origins set to what was their origin in Blender. And the next thing you'll notice under the export panel is these FBX settings. So if we just open this up, we can see that these are all the standard FBX export settings that would be in your normal Blender FBX export. The only things missing from this are exporting by selection or by a collection because that's already handled with Sent to Unreal by these collections right here. And then also exporting all of your actions versus exporting an action in your NLA strip that's also handled by Sent to Unreal. And then also the object types that you can export that's also handled by Sent to Unreal. And modifying those settings would uh, break the functionality of Sent to Unreal. That's why they're not exposed. But the object types that it supports on an export are armatures, meshes, and empties. One thing to note is that the settings that you modify here will persist across Blender sessions. So whether you close Blender or you open a new file, the settings will stay how you modified them. So if these were unchecked and you opened a new Blender file, they would stay unchecked. Um, if you save your Blender file, then this data gets written into the scene file. And when that file is loaded again, it loads in whatever that was that was saved. And so your information will also be saved into um, blend files as well, if that's how you use it. Uh, the only way that these settings will get reset is if the add-on is deactivated and reactivated, then we can see that it's back to our default values. You can also just reset the, to the default value that way too.